In today's video, I'm going to walk you through a project that will show you how to get started with Next.js and Strapi. Next.js 14 is out and it is awesome. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend going to nextjs.org, clicking the learn Next.js button, and you will learn everything you need to know to get started with Next.js 14 in this tutorial. You learn about styling, optimization, routing, data fetching, search and pagination, how to mutate data with server components, using server action, error handling, and so much more. But to take this one level farther, and what I've done, I took what I learned from that tutorial and I combined it with Strapi. You could get the details here in this article. There are a link in the description below. This way you could easily find the repo. But first, let me show you a quick demo of this project. You can see all of our data inside a Strapi application. We have our customers, we have our invoices, we have our revenue, we have our users. And notice we already have a test user. So let's go ahead and log in. I'm gonna click the login button, type in test user, and the password is test user, and click login. And we're going to be greeted with our amazing dashboard. And here you could see that we have our homepage, we have our invoices. If we go to our invoices, we have an amazing search. What's awesome with this search, that it's also works with pagination, for instance, right now we have all the items and we have two pages, but let's say if you search only for paid items, notice that we only have one page. And we could also search by name. If I type Paul, boom, we have Paul here. And we have full functionality in terms of CRUD, so I could create a new invoice. I'm gonna say Paul Braslavsky. We're gonna say bajillion million dollars. Let's say it's pending. Let's click create. We could find our newly created invoice here. Oh my gosh, Paul owes a lot of money. So now we could edit and update our invoice let's say that it's now paid click edit to update our invoice we could again go back to paul and now that it's paid you know what i don't even want to have history of this invoice so i'm going to delete it i know this is very basic but we just covered full crowd functionality create read update and delete with our next.js and strapi we also showcased our search capabilities where you're able to search by customers and so on. And I just realized I'm not rendering email here, which I will fix and update, no big deal. So when you're probably pulling, you will see the emails of the customers. But with that being said, the last thing that I wanna show you in this demo, if I sign out, you're also able to register with Strapi. So let's create a new user. I'm gonna say Paul from Strapi, and we're going to say Paul.Bratslavsky at strappy.io. We're going to say monkey as the password. Let's click register. Boom, we created our account. And if you go back to our Strappy admin, you will say under users, when we refresh, you're going to see Paul from Strappy, boom, right here. And what's cool about is that our whole application is powered by our Strappy admin. And now let's set up this project locally so I could walk you through the code to show you some of the examples. Here in our repo, you could find the read me file that walks you through how to get started with this project. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you in this video and we're going to explore the code together. So let's just jump right into it. You can go ahead and fork the project, but I'm going to follow with using the code because I can't fork my own project. So I'm going to use GitHub CLI. I'm gonna click copy. And within my terminal, I'm gonna paste the command and run it. This is gonna go ahead and pull the repo. Once everything is done, I made it really easy for you to set it up. Make sure that you navigate to your Next.js strappy example project and you first start by running yarn setup. This is gonna go ahead and install all the dependencies that you need to get the project running. If you ever get lost on any of the steps, you could check out the readme file here. So I'm actually going to use this as reference. So we just ran yarn setup to install of our dependencies. Our next step is in our front end to add all of our environmental variables. You could either copy and paste from here, but I also made sure to save all that information within the .env.example file. So once our application is done installing, let's open our project in VS Code. Once a project is open, go ahead to your front end inside the environmental local.example. Make sure you copy the strap URL and create a new file called .env and paste it in. Now we're going to do the same thing within our backend project. Make sure you navigate to env.example file, copy all this data and make sure to create a new file called .env and paste it in. 
Now that all of our environmental variables are all set, we could run yarn build and yarn develop in our backend folder. So I'm gonna clear my terminal and I'm gonna CD into my backend and I'm gonna run yarn build and yarn develop. This is gonna go ahead and start our strappy project. Once application rebuilds, you're going to be greeted with this admin area. Let's go ahead and create our first admin user, paul.bratslavsky at strappy.io, password monkey1234, monkey1234, click let's start. Perfect, our application is set up. We have our customers, invoices, revenue, and users, but none of these items exist. So let's go ahead and see our data. So within our terminal, let's stop our server. Let's type clear. And to make it easy, let's CD back into the root of our project and we're going to run yarn seed. This is gonna go ahead and seed all of the data that we need. This will import and delete existing data. Since we don't have any data, we're not worried about it. Let's click enter and go ahead. And now what you could do, you could start both your front end and your back end project by running the following command. Let me clear the screen. We're gonna run yarn dev and it's gonna go ahead and start our front end and our back end. And so if we navigate to our back end and refresh, you're going to see that now we have our customer data, we have our invoices, our revenue, we even have our test users. And if we navigate to local host 3000, and if we navigate to localhost 3000, you will see your front end, which is pretty awesome. Now there's so many things I could show you here in code, but feel free to explore this project on your own. And if you have any questions, you could ask them in the comments below, or you could join us during open office hours, Monday through Friday on Strappy's Discord channel at 12.30 p.m. CST time. But let's take a look at how we handle registration. Under my front end application, I'm gonna navigate to app and I'm going to to go to my page.tsx file, you will notice that we have a link here to our registration form, which is found inside our registration folder under pages. If we take a look, we are calling our register form. So let's navigate there and take a look at the code. In our registration form, what we have here is a basic form component. Notice how we're not passing value through the value prop, but instead we're getting access to our form data through the form action. We are also using use form state from React DOM to allow us to get our state from our server action back to our client side component. For instance, when we pass our data through our action, we are triggering our register action server component or server action. So let's take a look what that looks like. Here we are getting our data, we're getting our form data from our form, and we're also getting previous state that we could return in our response. One thing that I want to bring your attention to and what I love about Next14 is that they're big fans of using Zod for form validation. And that's what we're doing here. We are creating a schema for our validation. And if we do have a validation error, this will automatically return our errors to the front end, which is pretty awesome. So if I do try to register without providing the proper data, we are getting all the validation errors that is coming from our Zod implementation, which is pretty cool. Once everything is good and passed, we are passing our username, email, and password, and we're making a post request to our Strapi endpoint to create that logged in user. Once we get the proper response, we are calling cookie.sat and resetting our JWT token. If you're wondering where this is coming from, it's coming from next headers, which gives us this amazing method to add, set, or delete cookies. And what's awesome, once everything is great, we are being redirected to our dashboard. And the last thing that I wanna show you, what is controlling our private routing is this middleware that we have created in Next.js. So I am getting the cookie and I'm doing a very simple check here. Here. If cookie is, we're checking the path that we're currently on, and if there's no cookie, go ahead and redirect the user to login. There's many different ways to implement this, but I chose to do it this way. 
Oh my gosh, this video again is getting long. I'm really good at making long videos, but you know what? I'm gonna stop here. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. And I am going to go ahead and make additional follow-up videos covering some of this functionality because the goal here for me is to show you how easily you could incorporate Strapi in your favorite framework. And in this case, we are covering next because it is really awesome. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below, but you could also join us on Discord every Monday through Friday at 12.30 p.m. CST time with your burning questions. But with that being said, thank you so much for your support. Go ahead, download this project, break it, fix it, add additional features, do whatever you like. It is there for you. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. I'd love to hear them. But with that being said, I love making this video for you. I hope you learned a little bit today and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much and take care.